There's a lot of ambiguity in the world, but there's a, there's a design, there's an intentionality to it. What is the traditional Islamic world of design and art, for example? A beautiful product design can actually have an effect on the heart. Peace and blessings upon all of you. Welcome to the Safi Bros podcast. Alhamdulillah, another success story with uh, an amazing brother. He's a source of inspiration. He's, subhanAllah, a creative visionary whose work has bridged the world of design, art, technology, and a unique and inspiring spiritual touch, subhanAllah. May Allah bless him. We were very blessed to have an amazing brother, Peter Gould. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Welcome to the Safi Bros Podcast. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. It's really nice to be here. I've been looking forward to this. And, uh, <laughs> well, I feel we, like we, I want to interview both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> yeah. No um, speak English. It's all about you, inshallah, today. Um, mashallah, you've got an amazing journey and we'd love to share that with our uh, amazing audience. Uh, alhamdulillah. Before we start, I'd love to ask uh, our amazing audience, please, we've, mashallah, we're getting amazing views, you know. Mashallah, last podcast, I think, had... 20,000 plus views. Uh, so we'd love for you brothers to uh, subscribe and share and comment. It really sort of supports the podcast and, and uh, inspires us to do more and inshallah get some more amazing guests on board. Zamakallah khair. But let's start with you today. Bismillah. Yeah. All right. Take us. Take us to your, the take us, tell us about yourself, your family, you know, uh, how yeah. many kids, uh, yeah, yeah. mom and dad? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So I grew up in Sydney. Um, I was born in 82. So you can do the math there. So um, in Australia, you born? in Australia, yeah, in Sydney, yeah, yep, yeah. um, and grew up there. Had a, I guess you call a, um, mostly non-eventful kind of, you know, suburban middle class kind of upbringing with, you know, a few adventures. But I, uh, I now have, I've been married for twenty years. I have three kids, so two, Shalom. two teenage girls and a boy, and uh, you know, that's a whole other podcast, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> you know. Agree. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I feel very grateful, very brothers blessed, and you sisters. Know? Uh, yes, I have one one sibling, and uh, also in Sydney. And yeah, it's been uh, yeah, it's been. I guess I've been mostly based in Sydney, but I have at time I lived in San Francisco for a while. Uh, I lived in Dubai for a little while as well. Sure. And uh, always, but always, absolutely love coming to Melbourne here. Sure. Background, background. So you are from yeah. So my my parents and grandparents are all from my my parents are all born um, they're born in Australia. My, most of my grandparents as well from Australia. Wish a lot. Um, hey. Actually, one of my family members did the, the one of those DNA tests, and I was sort of like, "All right, give me something to work with." You know, we all, you know, and I thought it's very going to be very, and it, was, and it was predictably, I think, you know, British Isles, you know, oh, Ireland, wow. Scotland, Wales, etc. But there was, I think, like five percent Iberian Peninsula, which oh, is wow. like Spain. I'm like, Spain? Oh yes, maybe we helped the Humber Palace or something like that. Right? Andalus. You know? Yes. So I was like, give me something there. So, um, yeah. So I claimed that, but I, I, I'm doubtful. But um, yeah. But uh, yeah. So him and. Um, so which school did you go to at a young age? Yeah. So uh, my primary school was in just in my local area, and then in high school, uh, it's called Sydney Tech. Uh, in, so what area did you live in Sydney? Um, so it's around southern area, southeast, sort of if you okay. know the Brighton, Brighton and Sands area. Oh, yes, 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 that. Yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah, my got a brother that lives there. Yeah, yeah, nice. Beautiful so my studio is just down the road, oh, next, next, next beach down. I live not too far from there. Okay, um, nice. I've always kind of been based in that, that area, and you know, I've, I'm happy that my kids are growing up in the same area. Oh, mashallah. Yeah, you know, it's been I've seen a lot of changes, but a lot of the basics are still you know, really nice. It's a big oh, blessing beautiful. to live there. Yeah. Mashallah. Yeah. So take us through your school days, high school. Yeah. Right. How you found Islam? Yeah. What journey that took? Man, we're going deep. Yeah, we're we going are going deep. deep. Well, yeah, 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 we start, yeah. We start. We start. We start early. Bro. That's why. That's why you gave me like caffeine. I'm fully caffeinated. You know, going deep and sweets. Yeah, I'm very happy to. Yeah, like what a blessing. You know, now I've got a few grey hairs kicking in. Just you know, early forties, and you're looking back to those days, and you. You see them, you know, the incredible blessings and even the, the hardships and the difficulties become mm. things that help you grow, you know. Oh, and wow. and uh, I was very fortunate. I had actually really good high school experience. Um, I had, you know, positive kind of learning environment. I had good friends, you know, some of which I'm still, you know, in touch with and see, and, you know, a good friend Did of mine. Did you always love the creative side of things at school? Did you find that later on in your life? or It was there from the driven? earliest days. Yeah, earliest days. So give us your first early moment. There, well, uh, I remember going to my parents, you know, bless them, um, put me in a, uh, a painting, like a painting class early on. Okay. Um, and I remember doing, and they later on, I, and get this, a, someone, I got sent to a cartoon school, right? You know, and again, I have to thank my parents for, 
finding there was one. And I found out years later, um, like 20 something years later that it was, um, the gentleman was a Muslim man. And I, at the time I didn't know, and we reconnected through someone and, uh, and then had a very interesting kind of, you know, spiritually grounded discourse around that. But, but he would, you know, just those kind of experiences. Uh, I remember painting, drawing. I remember doing lots of trying to my, sketch out my own little products and ideas. I would invent like little video game ideas and computer game ideas, wow. make draw advertisements and things like that. Um, make little story books. Did you get and, into, did you get into graffiti at all? Um, not so much. Yeah, I was a little bit of a good boy that you know, I find, you know, although I, I probably... I just wanted to know if you had a wild side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it came, it came, it came. Um, but I, at the early days, um, well, actually I found a lot of potential and excitement in the digital world from young age. So again, unfortunately, my parents had, for example, we had early computers, like it was a, called the Commodore 64, yes, yes, the Commodore yes. 64. you know, and it was... We should pull that up, actually. No one knows what a Commodore 64... Can what? you pull that up, please? <laughs> we need our viewers to know what a Commodore Mate. 64 is. Mate, it was a whole new world, right? Isn't it's it? like yeah, a yeah, universe. Yeah, yeah. You've got all of a sudden you can create, you can code, you can, you know, use colors and art. There here we go. go. Yeah, oh, it wow, was it. So it, there she is. It there she is. It didn't come with a screen. You had to plug it into that's TV. Right. Yes, yeah. That's right. Yeah. A funny story, a funny story on that we were in an old, old, old vehicle, Tirana, yeah. and the kids were in there and they were trying to find the button for the window. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> they, they didn't know that. The, that's the it. Really, it's They're amazing. Trying to, trying to swipe the screen. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, well. So, um, yeah, so that, that was also had that, that had a real, um, yeah, a real excitement around that potential and making well. things and, 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 you know, that was, that was. So you were exposed early on. early on to the computer world, the digital yes. world. That's it. And, wow. and my father, by around that stage, um, was teaching computers. So it meant that, you know, I always had oh, nice. early computers and, you know, where you had to sort of enter all the commands manually and, oh, wow. uh, you the know, DOS early days, DOS prompts, BBS modems, you know, that was like, you felt you were also at the start of a whole new digital parallel universe, you know, especially early internet days as well, where all of a sudden you can connect with people online, you know, you can share ideas. Create, you know, I was creating early websites, coding things, before, you know, when there's oh, no nice. rules and there's no Google. Oh, sorry, there was Google, but there's no YouTube. Uh, there was no social media, there's no mobile devices, oh, you know. Yeah. We're showing our age here. Yeah, the, like, the dialing update. All your, all your younger audience are just switched off for like, yeah. oh, you guys, you know, enough, you know <laughs> stop, stop nostalgizing that era. But, um, but I did feel, you know, incredibly blessed to be learning. And that's where I became interested in design. I, I wouldn't say I really had a very clear grasp of, of the broadness of, of depth of what design could be. But definitely graphic design, digital design. And I think even um, not long ago, I found, a, I think, something from my, my primary school. I don't know if you're at, at the end of primary school, like you have a little booklet about, you know, you write or something like that. Anyway, and it was me saying, uh, in the future, I hope to uh, combine my love of art and, and, uh, and computers. Oh, wow. And I think that's what I started to oh, do like, in Isn't that school. amazing how that sticks when you write things down? Yeah, yeah, oh, there you well, go. And subconsciously, you know, that's why we always say write your plan. Yes. Put it down. Sometimes you... Your subconscious is always going to remember that. So yeah. Allah, 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 Allah. And, and I've continued to try and do that as well. Yeah. Probably like yourself, you know, right. And, and every year kind Inshallah, of check in. And write. There, I yeah. I just have my God, have always have a notebook, <laughs> you know, with the pen. Um, SubhanAllah. And so, yeah, in high school, um, the areas that I think I did best at were art and design. And um, I, I actually ended up winning an award in design as well, which then prompted me to say, like, I'm going to enroll in a design degree. So I was interested oh, in graphic Allah. design. Website. Isn't it amazing? My Allah, just being awarded is such a powerful thing. Yeah. Like just being awarded, it'll, it'll sort of elevate you and say, you know what, just because you were recognized there, maybe that yeah. could be such an elevator pitch for your sort of. Yeah, you're right. It's, you know, and it's, it's like you mentioned earlier, we were speaking that you're giving that encouragement. Actually, I, that's one of the pictures I did have. So if you want, you're welcome to bring that up from that presentation. There was a photo of me I found yeah. in high school um, that had me at the. Uh, yeah, there you go. You found it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, um, well, well found. Um, I happened to find that. And so, yeah, I'm dating the kind of era. Um, but yeah, this was it. And that was a, an artwork I was working on. That was photography and design early days wow. of things like Photoshop. And it was, it was, uh, and you had to do a lot of things. You just figure out yourself, you know, you can't just go to YouTube and figure change it out. You don't would think that's your girlfriend there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I definitely formed a special relationship with the Mac and, you know, but again, the, Mac, the right huh? learning environment. So I'll give you a story. One, uh, as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the HSC. You've got your art, big artworks, you and these computers back then are pretty slow and clunky, right? 
And um, I, uh, I realized, you know, the work that I was doing, because it was quite large, I needed more memory to actually make the computer handle the files. Okay. So I went to my art teacher, who was very trusting, and I said, can, do you mind if I borrow this computer at, for, the, for the holidays? But can I go around and borrow all the memory chips from the other computers um, from the computer lab and put them into this? So I like fully upgrade it. She goes, look, I don't know what you're doing or what that means, but I trust you. You can do it. So I was wow. like, no, you know, so I did, I went around to the computer lab and this is the last day of school. And I'm like literally opening up all the computers, putting the extra RAM chips in there, of course, because there were slots you could yeah. do it. And the music teacher comes, you know, who's from a different thing. She's like, no, there's a guy who's like, excuse me, what are you doing? It looks like I'm stealing all the stuff <laughs> on the computer. I said, no, no, I'm just upgrading the RAM from, from this Mac so I can work on my artwork. And he's like, no, you can't do that. What are you talking about? I said, no, no, my, the art teacher said I could. So he goes and confirms it with the art teacher. I'm like, and then he comes back and he's like, mm, you know, it's fine. But, you know, it's like that the art teacher believed in me, right? Yes. And I did and I, and I, and I worked and, and I won. Uh, yeah, I came first place in design in uh, New South Wales. And it was a $2,000 prize that... I then used to go and buy my own computer. Oh, and wow. memory. Yeah, and memory. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, well, no, isn't just, that amazing? Just touching that on that, people believing in you yeah. is, is a profound thing. It's just, yes. It is. Life, yeah. life changing. That's it. It is. It. And subhanAllah, so we all need people to believe in us because sometimes we yeah. just cannot see that light. Yeah. That, that's sort of, there's, there's a light in every human, subhanAllah, that's, yeah. you know, you know it's, it's maybe it's not as bright as it should be, but with, to a trained eye, sometimes you can see that little yeah. You know, a sprinkle of light coming through yeah. them and you say, Oh, I can see that in you. It's like Yeah. Wow. And then once they start looking in the mirror and seeing this, how lie that yeah. it's, they, they they kindle that light and they mm. start projecting that light. Just light. just through yeah. that journey of school and yeah. obviously uni, did you always have a God consciousness? And the family was the family God consciousness was because obviously, you know, they say in the art world, yeah. you know, people are very God consciousness and I just want to just touch base with you on that perspective. I know. Yeah. So that journey started to happen in parallel. So my, my family is, is not, they're not, not religious. And there was, there was mostly a little bit more, probably antagonism towards, you know, towards religion. And I didn't really have that. Uh, you know, I went to church a few times and things like that, just at Christmas once, you know, here or there more, more culturally. Um, and then, uh, it wasn't really until I came to know a Muslim family that was living in my area by someone I met at a bus stop, uh, oh, wow. I came to sort of, you know, encounter people that were, were smart, that were successful, that were, you know, doing really well, um, at school, for example, and having businesses and so on. Um, but also believed in God and practice like, hang on, my opinion from, of mostly of, of God and religion was all bundled into mostly what I picked up from pop culture. TV shows, The Simpsons, right? Mm. God being this kind of angry old man sort of character. Allah. And uh, I, you know, I kind of thought that it has no place really in the modern world. It's more old tradition and culture. But when I got to see people really living it, and I was kind of curious, um, you know, it's something that's lived. It's not just a costume or a, or a ritual, you know, and the practices are there, but they really are just expressing from what's in the heart. And so the word that I started to... And then came to know is this sense of uh, these people having a sakina in their heart, which is like tranquility. Mm. And you asked me before, how do you think about success? And I think, well, success is that that tranquility in the heart that comes through that surrender and acceptance, that peace from knowing God and seeking God. Amen. And so I, I was very fortunate to meet uh, this Muslim family. What age? Uh, I was probably about uh, nineteen, maybe then. Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen. Just wow. out of high school. Yeah, around high school time and g going to uni. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And uh, I just became curious. I got to know this family a little bit. And uh, one of them, one of the parents in his family was a convert. They embraced Islam. So they probably oh. saw in me someone that was, was curious and asking questions, but also had hard, hard questions like, well, what does your religion say about dinosaurs, you know, or things mm, that nice. just, well, that's <laughs> not even a really hard question, but just things that. So I kind of went on this journey for about a year or over 18 months and, and um, through that family then I got uh, connected with other things that are happening around Sydney, like some different uh, lectures and places and there's a couple of books I picked up. What made you hungry for that? Like what, what made you go, you know what, I should look into that more? Well, I think there's, there's, a, there's a stage that we hope, and I do think that most people on their journey in, in life, whatever tradition or background they're, they're from, or whatever their, their path is, they if they're honest, they do experience some awareness of a greater, some kind of consciousness, some kind of awakening that 
you know what, I may not know exactly how to define it, but I'm not just atoms. I'm not just, you know, organs walking around with, you know, a skeleton and, you know, mm. I'm not just a brain floating in a, th you know, there's something more, more. there's some intentionality, yeah. there's some right. meaning right. and, you know, the, yeah. And you walk, take, take a, take a one hour walk in nature and tell me that you don't think there's more to this life than so just being a, a chemical reaction. And you you know, like we have a connection, you know, we only physically meeting more recently, but there's something deeper. Right. Yeah. And I think, I do think that a lot of people arrive at that and I, and that's the time I was arriving at that. But then I was like, okay, well then, but then what happens, you know, when you die then what, why, you know, that you have a lot of why questions and I'm like, okay, well, and then things like, well, okay, my under scientific understanding is the big bang, but what happened before that, <laughs> you know, like yeah. basic questions that. So I don't claim to, I would never claim that, okay, now I've, I understand all that mystery and I've, everything's resolved rationally, but you also embrace that there's a lot of ambiguity in the world, but there's a, there's a design, there's an intentionality to it. So I had an appreciation for design, that being change and using design, but the world around us, it is the most cohesive, beautiful design, uh, that, that human, we can never even reach that, the complexity, the beauty of it. Uh, it's all there right in front of us. Signs yes. for those who reflect. Can I ask, when, when you obviously met the family and you've seen people living the din, yeah. why Islam? Why not go back to Christianity where your parents were or you've been to church? Why not something else? Why? Yeah. What, what was that pinnacle that said, okay, there's something special here? Yeah. I think a lot of it's to do with the, um, the kind of cultural stigma in, in Australia around god or jesus or the church where meaning you know at least in my environments and the kind of things i was watching and learning and studying the you know any even the word god in english it just it's already has so many labels and attachments that it has. I, I it was I what, the way i understand god or allah now uh it's very different to when i was like 17 18 because you know and, and there's, there's nothing you could really say i'll do that to take me out of that and when I first encountered a Rahman, right, the merciful, Al Latif, or Al Musawwar, like you know the fashion of shape, you know these attributes, of qualities of Allah, yeah. these are uh, these are very powerful, beautiful concepts that you you approach with a freshness. I'm not mm -hmm. bringing that attachment of all the things I'd seen and the issues I might have had around Trinity and things like that. I'm bringing a very different openness to these. So I think that's a a problem, I guess, is of the, um, you know, I brought my own prejudice to, to the, to those situations, but also brought, um, when you allow yourself to try to be ex open, you have to bring a, be open to a new, I guess you call it a spiritual vocabulary. So, you know, uh, if you just try and bring words you already have association with, it's hard to break away from that. I know. Like we were speaking before, words <clears throat> have a meaning and they give you a focus. Kind yeah. of like amazing. So these are just new words. Yeah. They came into your life. They gave you new focuses yeah. and new meanings. And yeah. And I remember reading al Fatiha in uh, doing the transliteration or encountering that for the first time and then reading that in, in English. I'm like, this is, this is profound. And it's, it's, it's confident and it feels so, uh, you know, universal and timeless. Mm. And, it, in, you know, if you adopt and understand even the basics, this is the first, you know, opening chapter of the Quran, the, you know, the opening, you, uh, you have... You know, you just feel almost at ease if you embrace that. But it, it did, it took me, it took me a, a while to sort of do that again, because of the, the cultural environment, society is, does not encourage you to embrace, embrace any kind of religious path. Um, but I think of it as this, and I kind of borrow analogy from, uh, you know, a scholar, Imam al-Ghazali, who says, you, you know, you can talk about honey all day. You can write books about honey. You can give it all the scientific names. <laughs> you can, you know, spend years studying honey. Until you actually taste it in your tongue for the first time, you don't know really what honey is. And that's, yeah, that was Islam yeah, for me. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. beautiful, amazing analogy. Inshallah. So, so you were in high school and what kind of journey that took you to, to implement, uh, to accepting Islam? So it was around, yeah, around that sort of time when I was at, then at university, the first year or two at university, I sort of had these two parallel journeys, you know, but everything's always you know, interconnected. Um, so my design kind of exploration and starting to do, you know, freelance work in design. I actually started in high school with my first kind of paid freelancing jobs. Nice. I was also working at McDonald's at the time and getting paid four dollars ninety two an hour. <laughs> and then I did my first poster for twenty twenty bucks. And I went. Yeah. I said, 
Well, I quit, I think, my <laughs> Mackie's job the next thing. You know what? I'm going to make this my career. I Amazing. love, you know, and, and that was, I think, 11th grade. So I was in year 11 and uh, I said, you know, I want to do this graphic design. I still need to do a little bit of, you know, work to get that grounded. That's amazing. That sort of that payment and that, you know, you were reimbursed for your hard work gave you even more sort of Well, drive, I, d yeah? I just felt like this is it. I, I, like, I, I, if this is a job, I want to do this job, you know, mm -hmm. designing posters and helping communicate and, the, you know, the client experience yeah. is good, even though it was my classmate in year 11. I mean, if only all my other clients were so good that he paid straight away, he was happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, we need a 10th revision now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but subhanAllah, it, it's amazing. I want to touch base on that because yeah. obviously you worked hard. Hospitality is probably one of the hardest games you can get into. Yeah. And it's obviously a lower pay, paying uh, job. But being able to do that and then doing what you love yeah. and enjoy yeah. and seeing the monetary yeah. difference was, was a catalyst to say, I want to, I want to go here. Yeah. But to be in, in fairness, I did, I did stay a little while longer and I actually then worked another retail job selling electronics and computer. actually it was called Strathfield Car Radios. Was oh, yeah, yeah, remember, yeah. Yeah. You remember that? Anyone from Australia oh, yeah, remember, remember that era? Yeah. yeah. I think JB bought them out or somebody bought Something them out. Something like that. Yeah. And yeah that's that's car audios and yeah, that's that's right. that, was, that was huge. It was. And, and so, you know, I'm, again, I'm pretty young, but, um, I, so. I, I never want to talk those experiences down, you know, at all, because I learned so much about interacting with people, understanding, listening, yeah. you know, sales, but also having to really improvise, use initiative. So somewhere like Strathfield Car Radios, for those who don't know it, it was, yeah, they sold, you know, computers, like electronics, yes. you know, also car, lots of things. Yeah. And so you had to kind of improvise to understand and research, think on your feet. So all of those skills, you know, in, in retail and hospitality, teamwork, you know, punctuality, all of those things, you know, uh, absolutely, you know, and, and yeah. I definitely hope my kids have those kind so of experiences yeah. as well. That, that, the, the reason I touch base on that topic yeah. is because a lot of kids think doing what you love without having the ground roots yes. is not important. Yes. That's why I touch base on it. That's why I, that's why I want you to actually Good. really, yeah. Yeah. it's very important, very and important. I agree. And I, and I know yeah. what you guys do as part of your, you know, community effort and building is, you know, you give people those experiences and they're, they're invaluable, invaluable life experiences. Yeah. They, they, they set the foundations, they, yeah. you know, of interaction, of communication, yeah. Yeah. dealing with co-workers. Yep. You're going to have a bad co-worker and it's yep. going to teach you how to... Boss. <laughs> <laughs> bad boss, a good boss, <laughs> yeah. falling in love with your boss and yeah. loving a boss who mentors you and hating yeah. a boss who puts you down. All these things, you'll yeah. never get them if yes. you don't go into that world. Yes. And, so. and, and it, it, it is quite challenging to be in that world too. Yeah. And yeah. especially later if you're going to hire and, and build a team, which, which I was able to do humbler over time, is is yeah having been that yeah. you know on both sides and in always being on that journey so that was that was definitely part of it and um i can't remember exactly where we we're exploring a part of the journey but it was so i was around yeah 1920 i was sort of exploring that path um oh yeah but we're talking specifically in terms of um what then led to me embracing islam was yeah. it, it wasn't really this sort of lightning moment of like suddenly the the sun rays, you know, hit me <laughs> the use one of morning. Slam story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But even that was <laughs> over did. time, you know, yeah, it, like, yes. yeah, I've, most of those spiritual journeys, the ones that I'm most familiar with, they, they come over time and then there might be a particular thing. But for me, it was, it was actually in Ramadan. I said, I'll, I'll try fasting because, you know, that's one of the things I'm reading about. And like, how do these people do it all day? You know, don't you get so hungry and thirsty? But I did, I'd actually tried, I tried a few days and it, it was difficult. Um, but I suddenly, there was, it felt like a big unlock. It's like, well, hang on. You actually have the ability through discipline and through, there's a, you know, there's a lot of, um, spiritual wisdoms in fasting that you, again, you can only really appreciate once you sort of go through yeah. that. And, uh, and then it was actually, it turned out to be the 27th night of Ramadan that I said my Shahada oh, and I didn't, oh, I didn't, wow. I didn't know at the time, you know, that that was, a particular thing but it was a, it was a very much a special uh moment and uh and then yeah it was quite a it was quite a profound step but where did you do that uh so it's in sydney um it was at the site that is now punchbowl mosque in sydney oh wow which interesting interestingly enough um uh, has been designed to quite a modern kind of new you know glass and concrete kind of mosque quite a modern site at the time though it was just a few sheds and a house you know yes yes uh, so, but one of the things that I think was helpful on that spiritual journey, there were lots of things, Alhamdulillah, but, um, you know, the right sahaba and people, but I did, I made a, I kind of did seek out and, and I guess ended up being invited to a whole range of different experiences, different groups, different gatherings, 
you know, it kind of felt like a bit of a um, a tour of different kind of groups around Sydney and, and for different kind of persuasions, different types of practice and some very conservative, I guess some very, you know, not conservative, you know, <laughs> um, and it was very, it was, just, it was fascinating, but I could see the common thread among there was this, this sincerity and the, again, that sort of tranquility and certainty of faith that brings a great peace and sense of purpose. Mm, and I, I can't say that at the age of 20, I had, you know, had a deep philosophical, you know, metaphysical understanding of Islam or even a lot of the, you know, the, the knowledge and the practice I didn't really have, but I had definitely this strong experiential understanding that this feels right. This is right. Mm. And I'm going to step through this door and we'll see how it goes. Oh, was there any setbacks? Was there something that said, you know what? Nah, not now. Just prolong it a little bit. Was there anything in your, in that time where that set you back in any way, any form? Was there like something that you truly felt maybe you can share with our audience because somebody's feeling it right now? Yes. Well, at the time was around September 11, right? Which was September 11, 2001 around that was from that sort of era. And there was a lot of negative, uh, in intense amount of negative uh, pressure and headlines on anything to do with Islam and Muslim. But I had been exposed to Islam for a couple of years before that. And I had been on that journey. And the things that I was seeing in, in the headlines were completely contradictory to my, my first-hand experience with Muslims of yes. all types. It was like, well, not a single person I had met in any of that time had any they were the opposite of, of violence and attacking people and you know you know political kind of islamic stuff it was it was like very sincere people beautiful hearts you know and they really they want the best for you with no agenda you know and things like no. that mm. and so i guess there were but i did it it made me really think this is a you know you're, you're committing to something what what is this uh path going to be about, you know, you, you know, what, what, it just made me really pause for a moment. It's like, hang on, people are going to judge you. People are going to give you labels. So mm. when I, when I did embrace Islam, I kept it quite private for a while. I didn't, wow. I didn't, uh, and there was no social media really back then. So, you know, uh, so mom and dad didn't know, uh, no, not initially. Although I think they had some inklings because, you know, instead of, uh, going out drinking with the boys or whatever, like at 18 year olds, you know, I was sort of like, there was a prayer mat. In the well, <laughs> well, there was, there was, a, I did have a, I did have a Quran, uh, hidden behind my guitar magazine for a while, oh, um, so where I was sort of like it studying and I had a couple of books and things that I was exploring, but, um, uh, but yeah, there were times I'm pretty sure I would have, you know, my parents would have thought I'd be out you know, at a concert or something, but I was at the madrasa or something like that. Yeah. So it was difficult because I just, the, the, I guess the societal pressure on anything Islamic at that time. And there was no, it wasn't really good kind of resources or there's no access to, there's no kind of convert support. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Your time. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. No convert so your time of, you know, obviously mm. conversion is a time where you really got to dive into the community and see the difference, like you said, the left and the right yeah, mm. and really navigating that. Yeah. How was yeah. that for you as an, as a non-Muslim coming in and yeah. seeing that? Yeah. But did, did it discourage you? Did you think what was going you. on here? Yeah. Did it you was... go back to the Sira? Did you go back to the, you know, what, what made you fall mm. in love? Because a lot of, a yeah. lot of, a lot of our youth tend to give up and say, well, I'm not going to do yeah. this anymore. Yeah. You know, they really get disheartened. Yeah. They step away from the community, which is the worst thing you could do. Cause we yeah. say plugging in is so important. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did you, how did you navigate that? Well, I feel like I had the, the full buffet of experiences. So the first time I remember I went to the Kemba mosque, I did go with someone, but it was, it was very intimidating. You know, I'd never really been to a mosque, <laughs> right. And, and I didn't quite know what to expect, but I went with someone, but the someone I went with got, when, as soon as we arrived, he recognized someone and, you know, they got chatting. And then, so I went and kind of sat in this corner this is before I was Muslim and I was like, okay, like. I don't really know what's going on in here. There's a lot of people, you know, but you know, I could tell, you know, and you anyway, know, this guy comes up to me, big beard, huge smile, right? You know, one of these classic masjid brothers that, you know, yeah. we all kind of know. And he's like, Salaam Alaikum. And I'm like, hi, <laughs> he's like, oh, you know, what are you doing here? And I, that was a really good question. I said, ah, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, kind of learning and thinking about things. And then, um, we had this brief chat, but then he said, uh, not, not long afterwards, and this is something that actually put me off. He's like, oh, well, we should, we should think of a Muslim name for you. Right. Uh -huh. And, and, and I'm like, it's way too early for that, you know? And I was like, and that was like, oh no, like, 
I was like, I already have a name, you know, like I, I already, you know, it was, so the intention might've been oh, very wow. nice, but from the kind of approach or mindset mm. there mm. is like, oh, we need to kind of get, get this guy and put him in our kind of, you know, he, he yeah. should, this is the formula or format. Yeah. And, um, it, that, that was the kind of thing. But then at the same time, you know, I had lots of other, you know, very beautiful experience and just individuals that yeah, yeah, yeah. were curious to, to help or support without this sense of like, you must do this, you must yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that doesn't work to the young, yeah, definitely me, it doesn't. A lot of people push you into this identity box, like, well, <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah. these little identity boxes within the Islam, the yeah. wider frame, and they go, no, yeah. no, this is a box. No, no, it's like, you no, gotta, you gotta do we this. don't fit into any of these boxes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, SubhanAllah, I want to touch on that. SubhanAllah, I, I watched the Amr series. Mm. And it's one of the most profound things because you see Amar before he accepts Islam, mm. but from an, from, a, from an image perspective, yes. beard, yeah. sunnah clothes, and very quickly he's, he's an enemy of Allah there mm. before he embraced Islam. Yeah. And then you see him accepting Islam, he's still yeah. got the beard, he's still yes. got the sunnah. So very quickly when I was watching that, I said, subhanAllah, how that was just something that there was culturally, they had the beard, they had the sunnah clothes. Yeah. It wasn't that that changed their hearts. Yeah. Yeah. Where today we, we were the opposite. We're looking, if you're not looking in the part. <laughs> yeah. You know. The costume. The costume has to be mm. on. It's like, no, mm. that's far from it. That's not what changed these great men. Yeah. From left to right. Yeah. But it's amazing how today we've become more, you have to have Visual, the costume. Yeah. You have to have the beard. You yeah. have to have these things where yeah. the hearts are not even connected as they say. Uh, yeah. And the, <clears throat> an anecdote that I think it was Omar Radulon, he, he heard uh, was it Yasin was being recited, I think, when he came into the house, Surah Yasin, when he was, I think it was Surah Yasin, if I remember, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that, yeah. I, someone listening can double check that, but I, um, uh, I did actually end up taking Yasin as a Muslim name as well, oh, you wow, know, wow, yeah, wow. so I, I, I did, I did take that a little while later, wow, about wow. a year after. I don't use it all the time publicly because, you know, I use my, my parents' name, so good name, but, I, you know, I took that yeah, as well. Yeah, so nice. Allah plans. Allah. But I think, yeah, you, you're very right, is that there's a certain package or a projection of like, okay, this is what Muslims should be and look like. And, you know, you can often uh, really judge from that out, outward costume. Yeah. But really, well, the, Islam is, I understand, it's, it's a state, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. like meaning not, you know, physical, the geopolitical state. It's an internal state as well as, you know, the, the name of the, the faith that describes us collectively. But it is that state of, you know, uh, peace and sakina, you know, and, and, and uh, salam that comes from that understanding that surrender and acceptance. And that's so powerful and beautiful and universal. Yes, Anyone, yeah, and yeah. that's why you find there are, there's lots of spiritual traditions that, that to, the way I understand it, they really lead back to that, that yeah. same teaching, that surrender and acceptance of oneness. It's oneness in the universe. And you see that everything is, is by design, not a leaf falls, but that God knows yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. you know, that's, there's a, that's, I think that's exactly what the modern world needs because yeah, yeah. we're so distracted and in a state of anxiety and stress and pulled in everywhere. But if we just have that sense of uh, groundedness, surrender, acceptance, that absolute simplicity that Islam kind of shares with us and invites us to, it really helps. It just solves everything that might come your way, mm -hmm. you know, because your mindset changes and you're mm -hmm. in a place of gratitude. You're in a pace, even though it's difficult by design, sometimes uh, you come back to that. There's a certain trust and that just keeps you in a place of calm and surrender. Allah, there's a saying that I've used before is subhanAllah, there's an egg. If it breaks from the outside, it dies. But if it breaks from the inside, it brings life. Mm. And this is where we need to nurture our brothers and sisters on the inside so they can mm -hmm. break themselves outside. Mm. But subhanAllah, there's a perspective out there that we try to break the egg from the outside and subhanAllah, it's not ready. So mm. it yeah. creates death. Yeah, right. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah. So, you know, that nurturing on the inside where you break, where you're ready to break and then you mm. break that shell out and you come out. Yeah. SubhanAllah. And that, 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 that's Islam for me. Yeah. But this is that nurturing on the internal and then you break yeah. your... Yeah. And you grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. Ah. And that, that awesome. Mashallah. Oh. Amazing. I, I, I love your journey, man. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's, I, thank it's, you for sharing that. You know, I, I love it. Well, it's ongoing. I mean, the chapter one is, you know, <laughs> awesome, they say yeah. we're always learning, always growing. And, yeah, you know, so take, take us from there. So now yeah. high school, finished, yep. you finished high school. 
Well, yeah. Where did you go from there? So I enrolled into a design degree at UTS. So I got into the course that I wanted to, which was uh, product design, or was it called back then industrial design? And uh, it was it was great, great journey. I all of a sudden uh, my kind of freelance business that I had started in high school um, was was flourishing, and before I knew it, I was you know doing more work and getting calls and you know inquiries from different people to help with their logo or their website or their brochure and you know at that time married yet uh no i got married a little bit later okay. that came that came i think about uh 2003 so yeah so that was about a year later maybe okay. um and uh in terms of so the design journey is really going well uh and things that i'm learning at it, it's sort of it, it's a real i guess fertile time for graphic design and visual design because there's you know people need a website and yeah, they're yeah. like who who how do you build a website you know it's long yeah, before knows. the era of all these things that exist now <laughs> PHP. Well, yeah yeah that's right php <laughs> sql servers you know even wordpress wasn't really quite on no, the scene yeah, yeah. yet it was so it was a fantastic time and I, I mean more than once you know i would guess i'm not afraid to, to say that uh you know i'd get a inquiry oh can you build this a website that does this and this i'm like yeah yeah of course we can yeah yeah and then spend the whole weekend trying to figure out how to do that, you know, yeah. and that was, that was fun. So there's a lot of, uh, long nights, you know, I, sometimes I remember a few times we had a little office, um, sleeping under the boardroom or something, you it's know, but right lot. before the client would come in and then we'd present it and it would have flash and animation and stuff. And then after that, I have to get to uni and do some schoolwork and then, but at that age, you know, like you're what? 20, I was like 20 ish, something 21. You have energy. I'm and yeah, I was like, I could now know where I could do that. <laughs> but it, it just reminded me of MDS. Yeah. We, 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 our first, one of our first business was Mobile Driver Services. Right. And we built a SQL database driven mm -hmm. website where everybody nice. can register online mm -hmm. and book, okay. which nice. is Dollar Driver. Yeah. Before Uber. Of, yeah, before Uber. Before Uber. Before yeah, Uber. Yeah, nice. Uber. Nice. This is like uh, September 11 time. Yeah. It's well, kind of, I remember okay, being, okay. we were giving a thousand, we had a thousand key rings that we were packing. Okay. For a thousand different people yeah. that joined uh, that weekend. Wow. As Hanala was sitting there packing those key rings and sending out all the forms. And yeah. so Hanala, that's when September happened, we were there. That, that oh, was wow. that day. So that was the day we were, we're actually mailing out all the memberships. Yeah, it's Hanala. So we built that SQL database driven website. Yeah. Uh, first of all, like, you know, it was huge because I got my mates involved because, you know, yeah. a bit of a geek when I was younger. Yeah. Still am. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Good. <laughs> so and uh, we were interviewed on 3 w and we were in the Herald Sun. Right. And they only put our website on the Herald Sun. They didn't put no numbers, no nothing. Even though we set up like a full on like six phone yeah. system and all that. Yeah, yeah. And our website crashed because we didn't build it. To, yeah, right. <laughs> to be able to handle that kind of there's pressure. No, there's no Amazon web services <laughs> or any no, of that. no cloud computing. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, no. So yeah. we didn't understand. So, you know, I'll just, you know, we, you don't build to that kind of scale. Yeah. And so, how It was amazing. It reminded me of the SQL server and, and building yeah. that website. That was one of the first we've done. So, how amazing, amazing. amazing. It, was, it was a bit of a wild time. It was, it was. You know, it was, it was a new, it was different. You know, how do you, how do you build yeah. that form? There was no yeah. structures for the way that we, the form is supposed to be designed. Yeah. People would say you have to put these on the right and this on the left. And how do you design a website? And yeah. it wasn't that sort of. There's no standards. Really. There was no standards exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. And it was before Facebook, and it was so it was a great time to start a design business, really, because the, you know there were it was a time of a lot of exper experimentation, um, and it was, it was just sort of word of mouth that I do a project for someone, so and so, and then you know another one would grow. And at uni as well, I met whole new groups of people and. Uh, you know, it was great because I was kind of freelancing and learning and then, you know, but also trying to, I'd, as many times as possible, I would make my design assignments, uh, client projects. <laughs> so, you oh, know, wow. you'd awesome. be like, okay, we have to deliver this whole thing. And then I'd be like, oh, well, good. I'll just adapt this here. And, but I do remember, yeah, there's a couple of times, for example, where we had to build these, it was industrial design, product design. So we had to do things in the model shop, like actually make physical prototypes. And it wasn't my strength at all. I remember I was getting really, really late on this one deadline and there was a guy in my uni that, you know, he's a really funny guy. Um, and I could tell, and he was really late. He didn't like any of the 3D modeling and computer stuff. And we kind of got to know each other and I was like, bro, can you make my physical model and I'll make your 3D model for you? And he's like, yeah, deal. <laughs> so then, you know, that weekend I went and, you know, did all the computer graphics and modeling and everything for that. And he finished my you know, my physical, you know, model. And <laughs> so I don't know if that was quite technically allowed, probably not, <laughs> but it was a good lesson in bartering and collaboration and teamwork. Again. And you're you know, leveraging really. Yeah. Yeah. Just leverage. yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's, and, and, and it worked, you know, so uh, it was such a, it was a good time to be experimenting and learning. And by the end of uni, I had to delay my 
degree finishing by a year because I was uh, getting so much work and I started hiring a couple of my classmates to help do the projects. And, uh, you know, I started to get some local government work and then um, uh, state government and then the federal government. So by the time I finished um, in 2005, six, I was doing re annual reports for, you know, federal governments and different things, different websites. Is there a website that you're really proud of that you designed that like stands out for you <laughs> in that well, zone? So there's something like you sort of, you remember well, something that you just uh, said, oh, wow, that is amazing. I can't believe I did that. I think at that time, uh, I, if I remember, we did the first Aporto website. For the, the, the oh wow well. yeah which is like a you know grilled chicken yeah yeah, we know, yeah. yeah, yeah very early this is like 2004 or something like that or i oh. I definitely designed a whole bunch of i don't know if i we, we quite did everything but that was very interesting that was at the time but the, yeah there was a bunch of cool um uh, projects but what i guess what um well two things there i also was really continued to be interested in in technology and through the um university you're encouraged to you know build your own products and ideas so one of them was I was very interested in augmented reality, and uh, this is around two thousand, you know, two and three and four, which is pretty early, long before yeah. iPhones and and this. So I built a working prototype of an augmented reality headset where you could basically, um, you know, hold up, you know, things in your hand, and through your glasses you could see three D models of these things interacting, oh, wow. animated. So uh, it wasn't all from scratch. There was some you know existing hardware and different software I could use. But that was sort of one of my major projects and that got me some attention from ABC and you know, I got interviewed about all of that and it was a really interesting wow. way. And I guess what that helped set up is even though I was doing servicing clients and helping them build brands and websites and so on, uh, I had this love of like, you know what, I think if you have an idea and you can develop that into a product and, and you know, create something cool with emerging technology that you know, benefits people in some way, uh, I said, I want to make sure I do that as well. Yeah. So the next 20 years have been sort of doing both of those things. Amazing. Inshallah, inshallah. Amazing. And I guess, so what's, if you think of the two tracks that we're exploring here, then, but also my kind of faith journey and my spiritual part is, is around the same time. So um, what's happening is that as I'm freelancing more and more, uh, after I became Muslim and got to know a couple of community groups around Sydney or just, you know, kind of sheepishly went onto a couple of things and uh, I was married actually by that time. And then uh, I remember joining this or well, visiting this organization. And, and as soon as I found out that I did logos and graphic design stuff that I like that, they're like, oh, brother Peter, <laughs> <laughs> do you think you could help with our logo? I was like, yeah, that's of course. You know, we help out each other and love to. And then, and then that, it's, you know, as soon as you're known for that thing, it, it spreads quickly. Yeah, it spreads yeah, quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, and yeah. before I knew it, within especially, a year. Especially when it's free, Sabilillah. Absolutely. Instead of free, Sabilillah. <laughs> I discovered very quickly that there was a, yeah, there was a, uh, well, he used the word sheikh, but I think later was sort of discovered, was not exactly, uh, got me to do a bunch of work that I never got paid for. This is early on. And I, and I do remember thinking, okay, I've got to be careful here because people who might present one thing about themselves might not be. So I mm. became aware of the, the free Sabilila um, model. And I have to say, I've been, I've been fortunate that so I've had that experience early on. Mm. And so I guess that, what that phrase, if people are guessing what that means, it's sort of a, it's a, um, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a play on the fee Sabilila. Yeah. So are you doing something in the path of God and helping usually, you know, it might be a project for refugees or helping. That's, that's the real 100%. way. Yeah, so I had had experiences that served me well later on. Being careful, you know, not just uh, if something's community work doesn't make it free. You know, everything That's has right. to be sustainable. For, for me, I think the best way of tackling that is you know speaking to people like Ruben, and obviously because you got to keep, you know, feeding your family. Yes. Uh, the best way I personally believe is, you know, if your feed's two thousand, for for argument's sake, right, is let that organisation know that this is what it normally would cost you. Yeah. Plus the discount, yeah, and then you can donate whatever you please. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Don't force me. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't force me to donate two thousand. I yeah. might not be able to today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what I'm trying to say I, I might donate five hundred. I might donate a thousand. I might donate the whole lot. Yeah, but that's in, entirely in my hands. Yes, yeah. not being forced to. You must. Yeah. Which, which really, because you don't know people's circumstances. You just yeah. don't. You just don't at the time. Yeah. That's yeah, it's my, my personal. I think that's a good approach, and and I've you know being around people that can give you good advice, and you know uh, I think uh, you know 
I mean, for example, I wish I had met you, you know, 21 years ago. <laughs> I, I would have, you would have saved, but, you know, I was fortunate because at the same time, my my core business is really more mainstream work for different, you know, I ended up yeah. getting through, uh, you know, through an, uh, I started working for uh, design agencies, some of them like well-known, like Ogilvy, for example, who work for a lot of big brands. And I was oh, wow. doing work for like, um, like Vodafone and Optus oh, well, and, sure. you know, and, and, and Sony and, you know, are doing a lot of, you know, a whole range of really cool design work there. They didn't really know I was Muslim. Um, but this was what, this is why I brought this up was, um, it got to a point where there were certain clients that I couldn't take on. So I had this moment, for example, where it was through Ogilvy, this, you know, where I was kind of freelancing for them and they were on selling to their big clients and they said, great work. We're happy. They're like happy with what you've been doing. Your last projects are good got a great project for you uh and it's for a champagne brand right and oh, you're gonna yeah. we're gonna help you know gonna design all these event graphics for the champagne i'm like okay so what do i do here like i i can't now that i'm listening like i can't i can't really do that like because it's sort of promoting alcohol and that's not what i'm about so so i kind of said i i can't i'm sorry really sorry i can't do this project you know and i didn't ex really explain why i was still a little bit kind of submarine mode at that time but <laughs> i did say um I'm sorry. Yeah, I can't do this particular one. Like, okay, all right. So they were like, no worries. And then I did another project and then they came back not too long. They goes, great. Okay. We've got a good project for you. It's for the lotto, you know, and you're going to, you're going to design, you know, all these graphics, this big activation for, and help us design the whole lotto experience. And I'm like, oh no, this is, I can't guys. I'm, I'm really sorry. Like it's sort of, it's not quite aligned with my values. And, and after that, I never, that was it. Hold on, they dropped me because they're like, who is this kid that we're giving this work and he's refusing, yeah. you know? And I think they, I, because I was traveling, I started to travel, for example, like I went to Morocco for a month and stuff at, at, around, you know, at the same time. So I think they started picking up that, okay, there's something about this guy that I was growing a beard, I had, <laughs> you know? And so I, I wasn't confident enough just to come out and explain why. Yeah, but yeah. the reason I brought that up was, uh, at the time it, it was hard and there were, you know, projects that, uh, you know, I was trying to navigate this decision. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, within a year of turning those projects down, uh, Allah opened the, the floodgates yeah, of yeah, yeah. all these incredible yeah, projects. And I feel yeah. like, you know, one door might close and then many others open yeah, if yeah. you do it with the right intention. And I've yeah, seen yeah. that. We've been there. We've been there. Yeah. We've, been there. Yeah. <laughs> we've been there. We've got been offered some mega money with alcohol, especially in the events game. We're doing about yeah, sure. 80 events a year. Wow. And uh, you can imagine the major events, especially major music festivals, got a lot of alcohol in them yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, we're, we're food specialist, but uh, we've alhamdulillah with Allah subhanahu wa taala's barakah and will. We, alhamdulillah, we we've never touched it. Yeah. We've been offered. We were offered a major contract yeah. with alcohol in it, and we tended without the alcohol. Yeah, we, we we said the same thing that you're saying. As long with our values. Yeah. And then. But we, we were comfortable enough to say, you know, we're Muslim of faith and we cannot be. We said, we'll do the food catering site. Uh, the, uh, we'll feed everyone hail, of course. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but the alcohol, outsource. Yeah. It was very simple. And they were like, no, nah, we want somebody to do yeah, that. They wanted a one stop shop, makes sure. life easier. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you saying, I want to do part of the web design, but the database is going to be driven, yeah. database is going to be done by somebody yeah. else outside. Yeah. It's like, you can't, you know, I don't want to deal with both of you to connect you, you know? Yeah. But the, the funny thing, those tests, you know, like you just yeah. mentioned, yeah. is usually in your business when you really need them. Right. You know, it's not, it's not yeah. like, oh, you know, yeah. you're comfortable and you can reject those contacts, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, you it's feel people, that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, oh, people don't understand yeah. that. Oh, the yeah. test, you think, oh, he's, he's already making money so he can let that go. No, yeah. it's actually, yeah. you need that money and it, you can you can foresee there's going to be problems because the cash flow is really running out. Yeah. And that's when those tests happen. It's yeah. like, Oh, do I let it go for this week? You know? Yeah, yeah. But people don't understand that. Oh, it's, it's not like just comfortable, yeah. you know. True business, sacrifice. True, true sacrifice, sacrifice at the time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, subhanAllah, and when, when, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you sacrifice for me, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a different world completely. Is, yeah. And so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens wet gates and yeah. floods. He's the, the one who provides. He's the one who gives. Oh, I, tell, I tell our youth, the biggest problem with our youth today mm. is they, they, you know, they're 78 hours, you know, TikTok, and they're watching these baghettis and these planes and, yeah. They want they want this you know wealth and right so now I'm like I'm like we're the only faith on the face of this planet that understands predestined wealth. Right. Rizq is predestined for you. If it's ten million, yeah, I can't stop that. Neither then Elon Musk can stop that. Mm. It's predestined. The only choice you have is to make in halal manner or haram manner. Yeah. And we we're the only faith that has this in our aqidah. Yeah. And they're worrying about their wealth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Instead of doing something about it, get off your yeah. rear end and go. Yeah. But they're concerned, oh, how can I make more money? I'm like, how can I make more money? Well, I, need, I need two side hustles. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what can I do a side hustle? Yeah. Should I do we this? We hear that you know, I'll, 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 I'll open a, you know, a website and sell some, you know, some you know phone fall, covers. You know how many people fall into that, uh, uh, what's it E-commerce. Uh, no, uh, they, they get stuff from Alibaba <laughs> and then yeah, yeah. They, 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 they just like, they set up some kind of funnel and they sell it. Yeah. <laughs> what about one of our workers, this is a funny story. One of our workers goes, I'm going to be the next best thing. Yeah. And he's one of our managers and he goes, I'm starting a website. Yeah. So he was going to Costco, buying yeah. tennis balls. Okay. Now, Wilson tennis balls are very expensive if you play tennis. Right. So he was buying, because they sell them in bulk, in a right. box of a thousand. So he was selling yeah. them individually. Yes. Okay. He was getting them for about $3, selling them for five. Right. Right. After everything, he was losing 30, 30 cents a, a ball. You know, but he didn't have any, but he was, yeah, the next best thing. I'm like, what are you doing? He's looking yeah. at the f- total figure of money coming in and that. Yeah. Never, never calculated his time that he's putting in. Exactly. Petrol. Petrol can't pick it up, come back. The membership of Costco. I love the, I love the spirit though. Like, yeah, no, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. It's good. But it's We've good. And there. that's what I'm trying to say. Learn. It's, not, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a journey, but a lot yeah. of people will see these websites and see these little, you know, clips. Yeah. You know, become the next millionaire, do this, do this. And all of a sudden. It's, yeah. a, it's awakening. They're doing it like, no, yeah. it doesn't, no, no, it's not that easy. Like, yeah, yeah. It's oh, yeah. like consistency over time. Yeah, me, no, it's me, people, me. you know, and, and if you think about design, it's all about people. It's, yeah. you know, relationships. Being, being the service to people, serving people. That's what, that's what design is, you know. It's yeah. not about technology or, you know, it's about what problems you're helping people solve, oh, whatever yeah, that me, might no, be. Yeah. So, you know, and it took, it took me a good, you know, five, ten years before I'd say the design studio was, you know, more mature, established, you know, like good projects coming in, but you, you learn a lot, you make a lot of mistakes, you know, lots of decisions. Inshallah. But it's, uh, but uh, again, there's two paths continue. So I would travel, for example, and I would, you know, my wife and I. What made you to, travel? What made you want to get out of, get out and I was so, see the world, as they say? I was so excited to to discover what what is the traditional Islamic world of design and art, for example. You know, the Alhambra mm. Palace or the Blue Mosque, or yeah. you know, oh. I went to I went to Damascus and loved the old souks or Halab, you know, in the oh, north, wow. and seeing all, you know, and all standing, you know, I, I loved. I was so excited to, in, in calligraphy, like Arabic calligraphy, mm-hmm. universal is phenomenal, right? When you study Western style graphic design, you know, English typography, which is like Latin, Latin type, mm. um, you know, yeah, it, it can be playful and you, there's, there's a lot you can do with it, but it's got, it's got nothing on Arabic because Arabic uh, as a language, visually, you can, you can shape it, you can frame it. It's so much more expressive. You can make yeah. whole... You know, it's it's like a whole world, and and you find out there's hundreds of years of tradition of people exploring different types of calligraphy. And that alone, and universally, people are at least curious about it, even if they can't read it, or even if they don't like Islam or they don't know mm. anything about Muslims. But they yeah. at least look at you see a lot of tattoos these days, <laughs> 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 right? Right, probably. They yeah. don't even know what they're writing, yeah. writing on themselves. <laughs> it's amazing. It's become like you know, like I know the trend of tattoos, even. In Asian calligraphy, you right. know what I mean? It's like they don't even know what they're writing, but it just looks aesthetically right. Well, right. There, there is there's something powerful about it, and, and so I, I was draw, I was definitely drawn to to that, and and so my, a lot of my travels were, yeah, I'd spend a year or a few months kind of saving up from my right. freelance design or projects, and then I'd spend it all on air tickets and go, okay, I got let's go and discover wow. and spend a month in Morocco or trying to learn Arabic somewhere, and nice. I, I was able to do my first Umrah, uh, nice. and and then. Uh, and then, and then I think that came into the work. So as I started to see, literally take a lot of photographs and some of those ended up in different exhibitions and, and the photographs of, of those journeys uh, ended up in different places, but that would directly influence my visual design work. So I'd look at these you know, traditional pieces or a manuscript that's thousand years old and think, okay, well, I've, I'm studying, I'm in the world of contemporary and digital graphic design, you know, building websites or uh, a little later that became things like apps. And I said, well, yeah, what does traditional calligraphy look like when you make it more digital? Or what are some mm. of them? How can we play with some of these mosaic-like elements in a, in a digital way? So that's a lot of my first kind of creative work for in Muslim communities were artistic experiments, photographs. And then I would go and do little meetups and gatherings and, and meet the other Muslim artists and creatives. So all of these kind of things, are all, they're all interconnected. Actually. Amazing. Yeah. Any roadblocks throughout that time? Like any, absolutely, like, you know, things that really were yeah, quite challenging. Difficult. They want yeah. to give up. Yeah, yeah. What am I doing in Morocco? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be happy there any day. <laughs> yeah, um, well, yeah, I, th- I think just try, trying to grow and, and scale the business. I think as I, you know, that was, that's, you know, for any any design studio or any, really any business, you know, as a, I, I was, I didn't, I wouldn't say I had access to great, 
mentors. It wasn't someone I could just call and say, how do I run my design business? You know, I literally had to go and get books from the library and, oh, wow. and, and sort of read like, how do you do a P&L sheet for a design student? How, what's your it's billable kind of like, rates yeah. and cost rate? And I had to, like, a, there was a lot of manual work and plenty of mistakes and, and yeah. it's difficult for a lot of quote unquote kind of creative professionals who, who want to sit and design and make beautiful yeah. graphic design and communication or you know, work on products to then go and do your best statements and p and <laughs> yeah. and you know i didn't have a brother like you guys got <laughs> yeah. each other right yeah, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. That. a lot of people yes. yeah it's, it's amazing like i know an amazing plumber yeah but he's got no clue in business he's got no business yeah. at all yeah. you know what i mean and yeah. without that support and getting him yeah. aligned yeah. understanding his margins his gst yeah. like yeah. you know his profit and loss understanding mm. his yeah. You know, his asset base and how he makes it work goals, and the marketing yeah. strategy and all these little things that you do as a business person. Yeah. Like there's a lot of great people in their own field. Yeah. But as business people, yeah. They 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 just don't they've never been taught. They've never yeah. like me and Ibo, we paid forty K yeah. for six months mentoring. of a mentor mm -hmm. in the business world. Because I, I came from a like project management, yeah. event management world, you know, Ibo came also from that kind of world. And we came in thinking, oh, business is easy. Yeah. And then we 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 had like the brick wall <laughs> got smashed. And like, I was like, yeah. hey, but yeah. the mentor we, we, the mentor really taught us a lesson. <laughs> yeah, he yes. did 100%. because he came and dropped the business plan and left. Okay, we're like, where's the mentor? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, it was like we just got duped. <laughs> right, but it was the best dupe ever. Yeah, right. Because we no, no. Look, he did, he did support us he a bit, support, yeah, but, but but we were getting jibbed. There's no yeah, doubt. Because yeah, yeah. now understanding mentorship and being a mentor myself, <laughs> yeah. I know how mentorship is true mentorship. Yeah, but yes. but, but at the end of the day, for us, you know, as they say, you know, yeah. hard lesson learned is a yeah. life lesson learned. Yeah. <laughs> so it was one of those moments where we said, okay, yeah. we got to empower ourselves. Yes. And that's and and that's the reality. Yeah. The reality is, if you don't empower yourself. Yeah. You never you're never gonna move on. If you don't pay yourself in bad statement or reading a profit and loss, yeah. doesn't matter how many people and that was a profound situation what happened with us because we went and spoke to a multimillionaire at the time. Yeah. He said the best advice I can give you is make sure you got a good lawyer and a good accountant. Mm. And immediately then we sacked our both our accountant and and our because they were shocking. Because yeah. they were shocking. Wow. <laughs> bro, I could I would call my accountant and say, Bro, I need this, this, that bro, I'm too busy, I'll call you back. Yeah, it was Two one days those. later, I was like, Bro, what's happening? Oh, yeah. you know, I'll get to you, don't worry, it's okay. It's not that important, isn't it? It's like yeah. okay. And then we sat. Lo and behold, we, we sat with our accountant. Wow. The first question he asked us, "Yeah, what's your hourly rate?" Yeah, and we were like, "What's he asking us here?" <laughs> because he goes, "I'll tell you my hourly rate." Yeah, and we said, "Yeah, okay, here we go." He goes, "Eight hundred and eighty dollars yeah, an hour." On, he put it on a post-it note. Yeah. yeah, and then he passed it to us like that as well. He goes, "Just yeah. to let you know." And then, and he goes, "The first question I'm going to ask you is how much is your hourly rate?" Yeah. And he goes, "Because looking at your bass, it looks like it's forty dollars." Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I do. Yep. And he's like, we need to get you, because he gets, I can get you as a job both is with your capacity and ability, yeah. getting more than that. Yes. Yeah. And that's when we came to realization, because we were paying ourselves last then. Yeah. Because we were all about the business. And he goes, yeah. no, nah, we're moving forward. He went to us very well. Yeah. Uh, he said, I've got to start paying. you got to start paying yourself. Yeah. According to your value. Yeah. And that's the first thing we did, which, which took our business to another level, because yeah. it put pressure on the business saying, you got to earn X, Y. For sure. To yep. keep used to alive. If it's not doing that, then what's the use of it? It was, it was quite hard. The first three years were exceptionally hard. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah. As of Hala, we had to understand that at least we had to, you know, we, you know, we got to survive as well. Do you know mm. what I mean? As of Hala, and we don't see that at the start. You don't, you don't yeah. see that at the start because you're yeah. sort of a tunnel vision of I'll growing, I'll growing. I'll take my head off to you on your own. On your own. Yeah. It's not right. easy. You know, yeah. Under that. It was hard. I mean, I, happened, I had my, my wife's always been very supportive. I'm you know, my bad. Even though she's not like hands on, you know, in, in the. What actually knows your wife? Uh, so she's born in Australia, uh, okay. but her parents have South African background. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so that was, yeah, that, and, and in terms of like a, a cultural reference point in, in Sydney as well, uh, statistically, it might've been someone from Lebanese background in terms of you think how many Muslims are yeah, yeah. from that background in, in Sydney. But, oh, um, wow. yeah, so, uh, alhamdulillah, and I appreciate that a lot, you know, and, the, and, and getting to, uh, you know, meet a lot of different diverse Muslim yeah. Community members and and so on. Well, that happens. That happens. Yeah, rise, we, doesn't we, it? Really, we've got a group that says uh, behind every uh, great man is a greater woman, uh, straight in his crown. <laughs> 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 well, I, probably my wife would say like, well, you know, next to every great man is a is a great woman. You yeah. know, like you know, but uh, I yeah, it's a it's a huge part of it, and there's a lot, yeah, and man. I and I've and I've been quite private about a lot you know that journey my family i don't I don't put them on social media and you know uh, i you know you've got to you've got to kind of manage how 
how and what you present yeah, and you know what's in the world. The Ayn, man, the Ayn is real. Like, yeah. yeah, but you you're asking about the yeah difficulties on the journey. So yes. yeah, scaling the business as a kind of creative professional, but also someone that has kind of entrepreneurial aspirations. And, and, and I did have that spark that I did I like I loved the idea of having a design studio that is both serving clients, but also uh, creating its own products and trying to experiment and build build products. And many of those became, you know, things where I saw there's a real opportunity. So as my young kids came along, I thought, you know, where's all the great, awesome, like, kids' books and, and content? And yeah. at this point, like, I had iPad had just come out the first time. I was, I was day one in San Francisco when uh, they launched the iPad and I, I lined up and got one and thought, wow, this is the future. It's like an interactive digital device. This is going to change everything. Uh, and it was, it was such an anomaly. And I brought, I remember bringing it back to Australia before they were out in, in uh, here before tablets were out. And literally I brought it to a cafe, probably I was just showing it off to a friend or something. And people gathered around and goes, wow, is that the iPad? Is that the tablet? Now, the thing is about that, that was only what, like, I guess 12 years ago or something now. Yeah. And in, since that time, the average adult attention span has dropped by four seconds, right? Meaning the power of digital addiction and digital experiences is, is, is tremendous. At the same time, when I do this in my, my teaching, my classes, I ask most people, how do you, if you read Quran, how do you read it? And most people will say a tablet or an iPad or something like that. You know, most people, that's, you know, maybe their phone. Um, and so the, tr the tr tremendous potential for good is there as well and convenience. Yeah. And, and that's how I, I read Quran usually. Um, and so I worked on one of the first iPad apps for Quran, for example. But at the time, there were a lot of questions like, oh, you know, I remember asking my teacher, he who passed away, uh, do I need to do when I'm like designing the, uh, the Quran iPad app, you know, when I'm hold like, you know, things that were kind of new. Yeah. That wasn't that long ago, but it, yeah. So where I was getting to there is my, um, so as my kids were, were young, I started creating uh, apps and games and, and books and, and toys, uh, you know, for where I thought there's a tremendous lack of great, you know, faith-based content and products and Islamically grounded or kind of Muslim-centric products and brands, and, you know, that have the quality of the other great brands and experiences that they, you know, ex, you know part that would, you know, be experiencing like Hasbro or Disney or Mattel you know, really defines so much of our childhood. Yes. There's four brands that own so many of the kids' products. You know, Disney, Hasbro, Mattel, and Spin Master, you know, alone control so much of the content that our kids experience. Even if you try your best to, you know, maybe, and I'm not saying, you know, that they're, they're bad because I think there's, there's a lot of beneficial stuff there. But I was really became very concerned about, okay, how can I, with my Amana as having a successful design studio or a small design studio, help build some of these products yeah. and help build some of these ideas. Wow. And that became a part of the journey. Do you, have you written any kids books and stuff like that? Yeah. So over that, since that time, one, actually one of my friends remarked recently goes, Hey Peter, you tend to work on a product that is suitable for the same age as your oldest kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then it just so happens that my, yeah, my, my uh, daughter who's 15 now, she said, uh, she really likes my current brand that I, <laughs> that I helped kind of launch, which is a bit more mainstream. And uh, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe there's a trend there, but I guess it's, you know, you're, it could sound a bit selfish where you're trying to focus on, you know, things that you immediately in front of you. But, it, you know, I definitely came across so many other parents communities globally as I was traveling and I lived in, in San Francisco for a little while as well and got great exposure to possibilities for innovation and Muslim professionals, amazing uh, Muslims working in tech. Uh, and, but also, you know, learning from great teachers, you know, in the Bay area, for example. And so um, that what became is yes yeah, is, is working on products and things like games, yes. books, different kind of things that I was trying to create that wasn't just client project. And I wouldn't say any of those were huge commercial successes, but they helped the, open the next chapter, inspire people. They're stepping down, aren't they? Really, yeah. they're stepping to the next thing, and then some of them humbly do become more successful. And they always they also open up client opportunities. So you might so for example, we made this. It's a board game uh, called Five Pillars that's sold in 30 countries and six languages and Alhamdulillah went very well. And so Dubai Islamic Bank uh, saw that and said, hey, can you make us a game that's more about financial literacy and living? SubhanAllah. So yeah, sometimes, and this I guess coming to some of the younger creatives and aspiring designers, is like, you know, be comfortable experimenting, you know, try to make strategic experiments. Well, I'm going to try this product or this idea. And yeah, try and try and build it in sustainable way the best you can. 
but don't think that, you know, if it doesn't work out, because it probably won't be the first one or the second or the third, yes. don't be dissuaded. You know, obviously don't go into debt and make silly decisions about, you know, putting your whole life hopes and dreams, but, you know, be curious and experiment. So try a little a design, creative experience, entrepreneurial experiments, you know, little cupcakes, not build the full cake, little yeah, cupcake experiments. Nice. 100%, and yeah. that always leads to learning and the next thing and you meet more people and grow. And that's, that's kind of all I've been doing the last 20 years. Oh, well, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. What would be the most, uh, sort of, what is the proudest moment you've ever had? Let's say with a, with a product that you've done, for example, yeah. say not yourself as well, but yeah. what is that product that makes you so proud of yourself and what you've done? I don't know how much you've done a lot. Yeah. So what would be the, the thing that you really, you're so proud of seriously? You look back and think, oh, wow. Yeah. And then I've done that. Yeah. SubhanAllah. I've been blessed with, with many and, 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 you know, the impact is measured, measured in different ways. Success is, you know, very holistic. Uh, hopefully holistic understanding. One of my favorites was we did a project called Salam Sisters, so inspired by my two girls when they were younger, um, playing with, uh, originally actually it was very first version of it was an app and I, and I crowdfunded it on launch good. Uh, I raised $5,000 and said, I'm going to build this app for young girls. And you know, it's going to have little stories and, you know, diverse Muslim characters. The app was okay, but I realized I needed to do a lot more to make a more engaging app. $5,000 is not going to get you a beautiful yeah. gap when they're, yeah kids are playing, you know, free games that cost a billion dollars to make. So, yeah. but it then, it, it, the, the concept was sound and people liked it. So we then eventually grew that into what became a physical doll range with, you know, big dolls with, you know, diverse that, amazing, characters. Beautiful, yeah. And, and what, what I was really proud of there is, so we, we took a year or two to help develop them while also doing client work and so on. So we, and we worked with a, uh, another partner of mine to make that happen. We had an investor to help get it going. Um, was when we launched that, um, all the kind of feedback that was coming in from parents from all different places. But one of my favorite bits of feedback from that was a, a reverend from the U S, uh, or a Christian a lady leader. Um, and she wrote this beautiful email and said, you know, of all things, uh, I've, I've, I took a, took a, a note of it somewhere, but paraphrasing it, she said, of all the things that I've found to help, uh, you know, encourage people of all faiths and no faiths to learn about Islam or, you know, engage with something Muslim. Um, this the toy brand that you've got is the best. And I've been using it in my church, you know, I bought a Love bunch it. of the dolls because I think it's a wonderful way for people to, uh, you know, ex you know, experience and understand a little bit more about some, oh, so Muslims are not just Arabs from <laughs> Saudi Arabia, right? No, actually. It's most of them might live in Indonesia <laughs> yeah, or Turkey or Bosnia Indonesia. or San Francisco or New York, or whatever, or Australia. So, uh, and that, that was a great encouragement that the, the, the potential for design oh, and product design oh, okay. brands that understand the language and interface of the day, um, that this is where people are on beautiful online content experiences. If you can use those in a more, I call heart centered way. Yeah. So not just making products that addict people and pressure them and just drive consumerism, but mm -hmm. understand beautiful product design can actually have an effect on the heart or it can at the very least, um, create an interface for people to explore something a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. oh. I, I love that. I absolutely love what you just said before, which is that letter from that person. You know what I mean? It, it gave you, it resonated so well. Mm -hmm. And wallahi, I ask all my viewers right now, all the viewers that are watching, you do not know how powerful it is to just to write to somebody and tell them how well they've done, how they affect. Because I know there's a lot of people that get affected out there. Mm. There's so many things brothers and sisters are doing in the, in, in the Muslim world. But we fail. We honestly fail them by not writing to them and telling mm. them, mashallah, you know what you just did was amazing. It really affected me. Because it happens a lot. We mm. all get affected by things. It's like, hello, I saw that doll range and it really affected me. And I thought, amazing, mashallah. And then seeing you know, Muslim kids playing with it. And I thought, Allahu Akbar, made my dark for you that day when I first saw Thank it, you. subhanAllah. And I think to myself, subhanAllah, I could have written to you and I could have written and said, hey, mashallah, bro, really amazing stuff, you know, but I didn't, you know, and we all can do that today. Every one of us can go out there and just write a little letter yeah. and inspire our brothers and sisters to do more. Yes. Because, you know, just that letter alone, how much, how much did it affect you? And, yes. you know, and it's, of course it's external, not from us even, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. SubhanAllah. So, so I, mashallah, I Allah, Allah, yes. totally agree. Yeah. Like how many people have we had on the podcast? saying the amount of hate mm. and the amount of keyboard warriors that are able to penetrate and affect yeah. us. We're humans. Yes. 
But uh, unfortunately, I agree totally. From, from a community perspective, we should highlight, we should thank, yeah. we should be out there sending letters, even if, if you know, yeah. just letting people know that we appreciate everything I you're doing. I love that. It's beautiful. And I just, I love that it's so old school, it's timeless, right? But those, it is. those who haven't think, people yeah. haven't think, but. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, think we have and I love that. And I've seen, I know you won't want me to share this probably, now, but I've seen, I'm aware of a couple of notes that I know at least, you know, that you've received from. Love from it. people and it is it's it's very profound and that mm. act of uh you know i love that you encourage that everywhere i go you guys is giving people hugs and you know <laughs> making people feel valued and, and the world needs that right yeah, we, yeah, we may yeah. we can't we can't solve all the almost problems in this you know one almighty instant kind of thing it's a but you know it's all of those individual pieces and those timeless qualities of the the way we treat each other and talk the way that uh you know you know, adab can be with Amen. just simple things. Amen. You know that that can change someone's state, and then that can ripple effect. And the 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 baraka of that, or the blessing of that, might only really be fully realized in ten years from now. Amen. You put someone on that certain path, Amen. and I think you guys are a great example of nurturing uh, communities Amen. and orient, helping orient people that way. It's very beautiful what you do. Amen. We were just talking to Sheikh. I, I should write your letter now. No, no, no. <laughs> it's amazing because we're speaking to Sheikh Qadir Issa Yusuf. He mentioned that the most profound. Uh, Muslim voice that the U.S. has ever had is Muhammad Ali mm. from a non-Muslim perspective, you know. And we don't understand the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people, you know. And he was a boxer. He wasn't like, yeah. you know. They are your share. You know yeah, what I'm trying right. to say? Yes. And he was the most profound. Like, yes. And I remember the time when, he, and he's subhanAllah, you know, at his burial, yeah. and you could see people on the street chanting, Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad. Yeah. And who would thought? Who would ever thought that the most beloved name would be chanted in the way that it was because of one man? Yeah. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's profound because Father Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says he's the most praised, mm. and it's continuously <laughs> praises him yeah. from a non-Muslim perspective. <laughs> These guys, are, you know, there's thousands of people watching this burial and praising Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how you know, uh, every one of us can do it. Subhanallah. If we have, Allah, we every one of us in this world have an opportunity to do and to, to sort, of, sort of light that lantern. Mashallah. And you've done it amazingly, mashallah. May Allah bless you, you know. You've lit in a few lanterns in your time and you know, amazing blessings. Sometimes we don't see it. We don't see it. Like, and and as, as, as I know one of my sheikhs said to me, Ahmed, it's, it's not about the apples. It's about the tree. You keep, you keep nurturing that tree and whatever apples come out, come out. Mm. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you, you, you know, you, some apples don't fully form and they don't get enough sunlight. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? They stay yeah. a little bit, you know, green. Yeah. And you yeah. get some apples that become beautifully red and yeah. juicy. But the reality is we're going to still nurture the tree. Yes. The tree has to still produce more apples, inshallah. And every one of us, inshallah, yeah. will one day be nurturing amazing apples within our community and seeds that, inshallah, will be planted further over. And that's the pyramid scheme. This is the barakas. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real pyramid yeah. scheme, inshallah. But, the, but it's all laid out, you know, nothing's hidden. It's like, yeah, yeah you do that and the effect, you know, might be, you know, 70,000, uh, you know, multiplication from small things you do. I, I learned a lot from my good friend, Muhammad Faris, who uh, had he created a, a book and I think probably a movement uh, called, you know, Productive Muslim is the yeah, book and he has his new book now, The Baraka Effect. And he talks a lot about this. And I was just chatting with you yesterday, Ahmed, about, he, he shared that, I'll share very briefly the story of, uh, so anyone who's gone to the Middle East or people who've had the blessing to do Umrah, for example, will know El Bek chicken, right? El Bek yes, is this yeah. brand. Everyone just sort of seems to know it, right? And I didn't know much about it. I just, you know, I've eaten there a few times. And he goes, yeah, but did you know the founders when they started that, um, part of the their the myth the whole approach and their intention from day one every chicken they sold they will don't make a donation as well oh. every single chicken from the first one oh, wow. and uh, you know i can't i don't know when exactly it started but you know he has the whole story but just the simple act of baking in that charity and the, the blessing that have come from that it's immense yeah, it's so i like it just shows you to me that sometimes especially for our young people like we're just talking about or aspiring designers or entrepreneurs or create you know success is really polished and painted in a certain way in terms of reach and impact numbers, you know, cars, wealth, and, and, and a lot of those things. And if that's baked for you in your journey, great, you, you know, maybe, but you know, in a more, more holistic way, uh, is how we should understand success yeah, and, awesome. and every business can be a heart centered business. I mean, I mean, I mean, well, I mean. Paolo, the, the chef was saying the other day, we're speaking about the Sadaqa factor and he said, your mail is not clean until you give Sadaqa for it. Mm -hmm. So sadaq, so mal is clean through sadaqah. Yeah. So without sadaqah, it's dirty. Yeah, right, yeah. And yeah. honestly, your time isn't clean mm. 
unless you give time aside. Because mm-hmm. you clean your time, you clean yourself as a human being, there's more barakah in your time. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. The time that you give a sadaqah as well mm-hmm. cleans your time. It gives you that spiritual essence, gives you that time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. where you can reconcile with him and connect with him. And like like the Sheikh said the other Sheikh said the other day, subhanAllah, you know, we need that solace time. We need that time with him. Yeah. Mm. And we can only get those time, believe it or not, I think is that we we give time. Yeah. yeah. Because Allah that's, that's one of the hardest thing in the community I've realized. Yeah, you, know, you can go to up to any successful person or, you know, and say, please give me some time. Come up to the leadership retreat. You know, speak yeah. to these kids. Oh no, 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 here's a thousand dollars, just leave me alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like they, they don't have the time, but yeah. Giving that time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving it for a good cause is the hardest thing to try to get. Yeah. I've realized. But everyone will give you money, you know, especially yeah. if they believe in you and they yeah. believe in your they cause. They see the outcome. They see the good apples. They say, you know what, yeah, no, the hardest thing we've realized <laughs> is, is to get people's time. Yeah. 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 And and, th- and thank you for your time. Yeah, Inshallah, Allah 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 Allah. Thank you for coming out. And now you flew down from Sydney for us. Allah Allah Allah. You know, may Allah bless you. you know? But we, I think, you know, highlighting your message and what you're doing is, is absolutely amazing. And I think there's a lot of aspiring creatives out there, you know, mashallah, because, you know, we do a lot of mentoring and we hear a lot of young guys in the film world currently, yeah. in the social media world, in the photography world. Yeah. They're all trying to sort of break out, break into this sort of yeah. big sort of like gamut of, because currently it's overwhelming. You know, everybody's trying to get in mm-hmm. and it's quite loud and yeah. they're trying to find an in. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, AI coming in, from, yeah. you know, a lot of creative, young creatives are like, oh, it's really disrupted a lot of, a lot of nervous, you know, thinking yeah. because of course. Hello, I was talking to somebody change. yesterday. Yesterday yeah. I was talking to a videographer. Yes. And I go to him, so what's the plan, bro? Where yeah. are you going? Yeah. And he goes to me, I don't know, bro. This AI thing's coming. I don't think it's going to be a job for me soon. Yeah. Wow. You know what yeah. I mean? That's what he said yeah. to me. And I said, bro, yeah. come on. Yeah. We use AI. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll be using that. Yeah. Come on, step mm-hmm. it up, man. We can, you know? Yep. He goes, no, nah, maybe I'm thinking of having, you know, like I need to have a plan B. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, there's no plan B. It's plan A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People <laughs> yeah. are always going to watch films. And yeah, ex- exactly. I, I, someone put it this way is, you know, uh, are we going to all be replaced by AI? AI? And his answer was, um, no, but you, you might be replaced by someone using AI, if yes. you know, so mm. just, I think just, you know, I mean, that's, a, I know that's another whole podcast, but yeah, I, I'm, it's a shout out to any creatives out there, illustrators, concept artists, videographers, because it has really disrupted, uh, you know, a lot of things in a short space of time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. But there's always, this thing is, there's always a uh, tremendous value in understanding people. Don't focus on the technology. What do people want? What do you need to communicate? What movies and films and content needs to be made now you know if ai might help you in some way you know maybe you can yeah. embrace that as part of it but focus on your why and what you're doing and who you're serving and you know with that that right near intentionality then you know inshallah you will find a beautiful opportunity there. alhamdulillah amen amen thank you for the advice Zakallah khair so uh mashallah, we've taken you through the journey uh so far we haven't dug deep enough yet of course <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more no, no, no. <laughs> I, I really want to take you sort of to Maybe, you know, in, in, in your sort of world, you know, mm. what would be like, you know, one of those darkest moments you've ever had? Mm. Let's take, yeah. a, take us to a sort of a place where, I don't know, maybe in your younger self where, we, you know, mm-hmm. especially, you know, like every one of us has those moments where we say, oh, Rob, you know, I've given up. Yeah. Tried my best. You know, I don't know where to go from here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you had one of those, you know, in, yeah, in, well, in, look, in your you, world, man. Definitely you all have, have versions of that, you know, uh, different you know, in different cycles of, of that as well, like, you know, Iman or, or faith as well as, you know, kind of cyclical or it's a, you know, it's a, it's a journey, yeah. you know, like a, a Wi-Fi signal or sometimes, yes. you know. <laughs> the heart goes up and down, right? Doesn't yeah, stop. yeah, yeah. So, I, th- you know, I, I've definitely had that and I've seen, um, there's a lot of moments, definitely moments of despair where you see a lot of, you know, horrible things happening in the, in the world as well. So, I mean, for me as well, so I had the fortune to, for example, visit uh, Syria before this horrible war that's been going wow. for over, you know, over 10 years. And for example, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to visit there and, and also visit, uh, you know, Quds, Jerusalem and, and be able to just, you know, this white dude from Australia, right? The other side of the planet, go there, my passport works and I can just go around, take photos and, and, and whatnot. And uh, I remember, uh, and I humbly I took a lot of photos around Syria just as, as a tourist, and I love the art and the people, the food, the history. You can see layers of culture in Damascus, and you see, you know, you just feel yeah. like, wow, this is this Amazing. is this is the story of humanity in one street. You know, you can see like <laughs> layers of like, you know, the you know the the Jupiter Temple. You can see the Roman ruins. You can see, and then the mosque and Salahadin's tomb right there. You can visit it, and I was like, wow, this is 
you know, I feel connected to the human story, you know, yeah. thinking about how many people here, like me, some guy worries on the world, worried about cash flow, worried about his marriage, worried about, you know, like really for the last 10,000 years, there's been people on the same street, literally that street's mentioned in the Bible. That's that, oh, wow. yeah, I think, or whatever it's called in, in the Bible, right? Oh, From, wow. in, I remember being on that street. And I, I remember then, uh, not too long later, but then of course, over the coming years, seeing the, you know, things fall apart in, in yeah. Syria and then wow. thinking that, you know, but both of these, all these people involved, they're saying they're Muslim, right? All these people are, or they're, you know, seeing, you know, and I've never been into like politics and geopolitics and it's not, you know, not deep, but, you know, people, you're concerned about people. But I remember seeing, you know, people play, play around the mosque in Damascus and have some nice photos and you know, conversations. And yeah, I even remember, like, for example, uh, yeah, one of the, it was a cafe, I think, in Damascus, and I was the lady was chatting with me. It's like, you know, Anta min when? You know, I was learning Arabic or win min when? I was like, oh, Anna, Anna Australi. He's like, Anta Israeli? He's like, no, no, Anna Australi. <laughs> I was like, nah, oh, Australia. Mm. Oh, Australia. Mm. Mashallah. You know, like it's so far. And, um, but of course, you know, as the war gets worse, you know, I became really disillusioned and very sad. And I, for example, some of the, um, Mosques that I visited, I took photos of this minaret in Halab, in Halab which uh, stood for a thousand years and then was, was knocked down. It was shot by oh, some wow. artillery and this a thousand year old minaret was, you know, and I just felt, you know, like, and this is apparently, these are Muslims fighting each other. Right. And I was like, how, how can people, you know, this is not, it's, 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 it makes you really think it's like, wow, what, what, what state are people in that this desperate power struggles and things like that are happening? And you feel for the people and the people you met. Yeah. And that, I guess what that also inspired is a, I felt I need to do more, especially for refugees. So I became more actively involved with UNHCR, uh, nice. the Australian um, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. I said, right, well, let me be more actively involved in something there. And let so me do my uh, part. Well, let me contribute. And the, the thing is like, it's, that's easy when, you know, you have a title and you're doing stuff with, you know, officially, I, but I know, and I got to know that re almost every Muslim family that I'd come to know in, in Sydney and in different parts of the world, they, they're all so generous, like their whole oh, life, wow. always giving, yeah. never, they never get the cred for it. They don't want it. Yeah, they're just yeah, giving, man. they're helping. It's just so much a part of the, the culture and the it deen is, is like, it's, it's, it's incredible, right? And the amount of zakat that's given annually is like phenomenal. And, and I would have never known anything about this if I hadn't, you know, gone into that journey. Anyway, um, so I, did, I remember there were, I was, you know, that was really traumatic seeing some of that, but that's just me and as an observer, like, but this is thinking about and the guilt you have of like, who am I, you know, I can just show up to Jerusalem and, and go and pray in mosque there like you know and seeing some horrible things and uh yeah so but it just i guess ultimately it's like well you have to think that everything's designed by a line a certain way and yeah. you have a role to play and you're you'll be questioned your mind is like well what i'm how what's my role in this and maybe i can't solve global politics yeah. i can't solve things happening in the world but you know what can i contribute towards and uh that was that was part of the that opened up a new set of uh, i guess commitment in my life. Mashallah, mashallah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, that on your journey now, so you, take us through that journey of like your growth internationally, opening up. Like, I know you told us you've done that. Yeah. But uh, so, like, you know, I know you've done, mashallah, some amazing big projects. So you've worked with Disney, you've worked with the really big, big boys, mashallah. So, uh, I, yeah. What, so, I've done, uh, I haven't worked directly for Disney, but I've, I've had um, some. Uh, people from Disney through my programs that I teach the heart of design. Um, and, uh, but I've worked with Apple and Google and some big brands like in Apple in particular was, is, has been great. They're, they're a current client for some things that I do. So it's not really designing uh, products. They've got enough people doing that a great job, but, uh, you know, working on some of their programming and some of their content, uh, that's connected to uh, Islamic art, for example, and creativity around nice. that and some of their, uh, you know, some of their, um, uh, different internal communications. So, uh, the, anyway, the journey towards that is really over time that I, I think, um, when I'd become, I guess, known for or our studio known for, you know, Islamic design, Islamic creativity, yeah. but we're in Australia and you don't really think this is the heart of like Islamic design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, know, exactly. Like, yeah. It's, it's like, what, hang on, you're on the other side of the planet. Sometimes the people think it's a different planet altogether because we're so far away, 15 yeah. hours to Dubai. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, um, 
But I think that's a tremendous blessing because I wasn't based in London or New York where there's, you know, bigger kind of, say, Muslim creative scene. I had to fly out and travel and be in the world mm. and, and set up events and, and go, really go out of my way to learn, connect and do, do, do uh, you know, creative meetups and, and go through, you know, different, uh, different kinds of entrepreneurial uh, programs around the world. So I just made an effort and intention to be very proactive and, and be out. And, and over time, you build relationships and people get to see your kind of work. So when I moved to San Francisco for a while, uh, it was, I, I had a wonderful experience because you're in the heart of kind of the Silicon Valley or, you know, where you might go to, a, to, to on Juma, um, you know, at the end, you give your salam to the right, the guy's working at Google, you know, salam to the left, he's working at Apple. And you get to know... I, I got exposed to a whole group of communities that I didn't really have in Australia. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, and then through that, they interested in your work and the perspective you're bringing. And just over time, you know, just kind of that led to different projects that led to different uh, kind of collaborations and always kind of growing the studio. And when I was based in Dubai for, as, as, as well, um, for a while, that was a great way to get to work on really interesting projects with people that have, kind of means and resources to, to back some of your kind of Islam inspired ideas, which is pretty cool. Amazing. Along with that, mashallah, that's amazing. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So if anybody needs to find you, how, how, how would they ever, how, how would they find you? So let's, let's do the plug quickly now. So if anyone <laughs> yeah. wants to buy those dolls, etc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they are. So, well, the, the, okay. So the, in the dolls, Humbler fully sold out the whole production. And then, uh, as we were going to our second production, COVID hit. Badly, and we had to rethink and rechange, you know, the whole oh, wow. supply chain. So, uh, it, inshallah, it's gonna it's gotta be rebooted and some changes in production. So, but there's definitely you can reach out there. So, I have my my standard joke about being contacted is if you Google my name, Peter Gould, the first guy that comes up is a Hollywood director, <laughs> award winning guy who won uh, Academy Award for Breaking Bad and all these things, right? Oh, okay. And we follow each other on Twitter, which is funny. Occasionally, he retweets me and. Uh, and I get messages sometimes from people pitching ideas to him, right? And, <laughs> and I've thought a few times, oh, I could really have a bit of fun with this person, but I haven't done that. <laughs> In fact, actually, there was an event uh, I went, uh, I was part of, and they read out his bio uh, oh at my, my event. I was so like, and everyone thought I'm this Academy Award winning director. <laughs> it's like, I was like, actually, it's not a bad thing. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, like yeah. And a lot of my Muslim friends have the opposite problem because there might be Muhammad Ahmed or Ahmed yeah, Abdullah yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. and then it gets all these red flags. <laughs> when they go to visit New York because they're like, no, that's some guy I've never heard of in Syria, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's so it's, you know, so I'm conscious of things like that, but you can Google my name or just go to my website, um, you know, petergould.com, um, and all the stuff is there. Alhamdulillah. Allah We always like to finish off uh, with a podcast with a, I am statement. Mm. Uh, like, uh, Iba inshallah will give his, I am statement now and then to give you an indication. Mm. Uh, I am a giver. Mm. That'll define me. That's my I am. Do you change it every podcast? No, no, no. That's your one. So, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, so, uh, so, my, so my I am mm. is I am a student who aims to be of benefit. Yeah, right. And you're put. I'm someone who's being put on the spot. So, <laughs> like, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is your I am statement? <laughs> yes, uh, I am inshallah a designer in service to the people. Love it. Love it. Beautiful. Inshallah. Love it. Zakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Thank you for sharing your amazing journey. Uh, honestly, it was uh, beautiful to see your journey and your life and uh, sharing all, all that you've gone through. And it's beautiful. Inshallah, we can inspire some brothers and sisters to do the same. I love Zakum that. Reach out anytime. It's been beautiful. Thank I, have, you I really love chatting with you guys anytime. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming down. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.